are stewards of Pine Creek Earth Farm and School of Country Living in western Pennsylvania. We're about two hours north of here in Cookville, Pennsylvania. Crockies are not only good to eat, but they're also very good medicinal mushrooms. They are known to lower cholesterol. They are, have anti-tumor properties to them, and they're very high in vitamin D. Okay, we harvest them is when the cap is two-thirds open or more, but two-thirds cap open, it seems to be the, gets the freshest before the bugs and the slugs start getting in them. Uh, I cut them off at the stem. The stems are usually tough, so I break those off and I dry those separately, but <laughs> yes. How long does it take to dry them? Uh, in the sun, it takes about two days. Uh, the logs that we usually use are hardwood logs, preferably white oak. White oak tends to be the best. And that's, uh, I don't have an example of white oak. This kind of looks like white oak, but this is a uh, quaken aspen. But it, it has a similar looking bark. White oak will have a similar looking bark. Any, any um, deciduous tree will work that isn't antifungal, such as black locust, honey locust. I wouldn't use black locust, honey uh, locust. Pear. Um, a big pair of limbs and, over there. Uh, uh, chestnut, an apple, pear, those, I would not use those. Oh man. Because they're, they've been found not to grow <laughs> successfully. You want to start anywhere from, what, what does my paper say? Three to eight inches. Three to eight inches. Now three in, because only because you get smaller than three inches, you're not getting much sapwood. If you get larger than eight inches, you're just carrying a lot of round, a lot around a lot of weight. I cut it, cut it when the leaves are off of it. Usually after November, October, November. Okay. Uh, cut in the year, cut, cut in the spring of the year. Inoculate immediately uh, because then that way you won't let any other mushroom take over. It's, it's much much like any other bacteria or fungus. Once it colonizes a place, it's going to fight off everything else. It's, don't let the log go below 30 degrees or 30 percent moisture. In the shade, you should have that problem if it rains every couple weeks, like it does for cold weather, hot weather, and wide range. And to start with, I, I recommend wide range because I give you the most success. It grows. Uh, in a wide range of, of um, conditions. And then there's different kinds of spawn that you can use. You can use this bug spawn. This is what, again, if you, if I was just starting out, I would probably start with plug spawn. And all it is are, they are dowel rods, and they, the dowel rods are perch dowel rods, and then they are inoculated with the spore drill a hole in the log and you pound that in and you cap it with some wax. This is wide range or this is shiitake spawn and this is called thimble spawn and they sell this as the easiest because you drill it and you stick the thimble in there and it's all done said and done but the problem is because you don't have to wax the reason you don't have to wax it is because it has this little piece of styrofoam on top of it. Economical which is me, uh, which is the way I like it, is called uh, soda spawn. If you've ever seen those tabletop kits where you can, you get a bag like this and you just poke holes in it and shiitakes grow out of it. <coughs> Most of the shiitakes grown for food to be sold in the stores today, dual mushrooms or any mushrooms you're buying in the store, most of them are grown in a bag like this. Okay? and it's grown on, on sawdust. They pale in comparison, in my opinion. They look, they, they, they are much lighter, they are not as flavorful, and I doubt that they are as medicinal properties or nutritional as, uh, as the natural ones grown on, on logs. Or cordless drill. And I drill, I'm going to drill a hole six inches apart down the log, and then I'm going to turn it and then alternate so uh, when I end up it's going to be a diamond pattern. This, this builds strong shoulders. 
But we're going about six to eight inches apart. And the hole is about an inch and a quarter at the most. You have your holes drilled, then you take this, this is called a thumb inoculator. All it does is um, you, you have your, your spawn, you poke that down in there, and whenever you press on the thumb, you're going to inoculate. I'll do that again. There. You, it, if, you get, if you get it on the hole, it goes in really easy. It doesn't have to be packed in there necessarily tight. It doesn't matter if there's a little air space because it grows. If you don't, if you don't want to spend 15 or 20 bucks on that, you can just stick it in the hole with your thumb. And then you wax it, okay? They recommend cheese wax. I, I use beeswax because I'm a natural kind of guy and I, and I can get beeswax and cheese wax has paraffin in it, which is a petroleum product. And I, I use enough petroleum products driving here, so. Uh, so, the other thing you can do, so usually I melt the cheese, beeswax, cheese wax, it doesn't matter. Any kind of wax in an electric frying pan and just dip it, and as soon as it touches the cold log, it, it seals it. Do it. With the school kids sometimes, I'll take the beeswax and I'll soften it with another oil, like olive oil, so, so they don't have to be playing with hot wax. That's really there, all there is to inoculating a log. Now, that's what I just showed you is, the easy, is, is almost the easiest way to do it. After they're inoculated, okay, we stack birds just all pine forest. And so I put them in pine forest so they are attacked. If they, they're trying to be attacked by some fungus, it's a pine, you know, something that will eat con conifers, not hardwood. A row of white pine, then I just take a pipe and I just strap the pipe about three feet up vertically. It could be a, a pole, it could be anything. And then I just lean the, the log against it. Our PowerPoint has pictures of it, and I apologize that you can't see it. And, and we'll have this down at our at our our stand afterwards. You can look, you know, you can watch. Now, if you want to force them, you want to get them to go. You you're impatient, okay? After they have after they've set, well, I'll back up for one minute. It, the the drier the climate you are, the lower the more you want to lower the log to the ground to get more moisture to the point that you would almost lay, lay them. It doesn't hurt the first year to lay a log on the ground. This is called, there's a stacking method there. It's, it's on the list, but I just, I'm sorry. You just lay them like that. Just one log up. Just one log up like that, and it collects a lot of moisture out of the ground. And you just keep stacking them down the row like that. That's to get them, that's to get them uh, colonizing. Once they've colonized after a year to 18 months, then I would pick them up and lean them against the tree so give them room to fruit all around. Because if they're touching each other, they're not going to, they're only going to fruit where, they, where they're where they able to. They, they also need some vibration, okay? In in Japan, it's earthquakes. <laughs> serious? You know, sounds funny, but it's serious, okay? What? We don't have earthquakes in the United States. What do we have here? Thunderstorms. Thunderstorms, exactly. Usually after a thunderstorm I go up and the logs are fruiting. I went down and all I did was pick up the log and go like that. And then I thought, you know what, I'm going to only do every other log. So I went down and did every other log down a row of about 25 logs. Every other log. I came back a week later from Jamestown, New York, and every other log was busting. I mean, more, 30 mushrooms per log. And I said, I'm a thumper from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, when you so I thumped them after, after a, rain, a rain, after a rain, after a heavy wet rain. In the spring, in the spring, yeah, in the spring, usually June, July, you, August. This is after they're a year old. After they're a year old, 